Recently, I did a video on this cheap HDMI Super Nintendo clone console. I think it looks really nice and everything I threw at it seemed to work fairly fine. If you haven't taken a look at that video, I'll put a card up top, check it out where we unboxed it, gave you guys my thoughts on it. But yeah, I was pretty impressed with this thing. It's kind of strange too. It comes with a uh, Super Retro Games cartridge, has like over 500 games on it and they're all NES games and they perform beautifully well on the system better than I've seen pretty much any cheap NES clone console does. Kind of strange, but I took a look at the comments on that video and there's a lot of suggestions on things that people wanted to see. And no, one of them was tearing this thing down, which we're gonna do today. Another was testing Super Game Boy. So we're gonna do that as well. Original cartridge and the EverDrive. So we're gonna do that. This thing, uh, some people were asking questions concerning this. I don't see any screws on here. Um, I'm not sure how to open this cartridge without damaging it. I've been trying to like slide it open or kind of pry it. I don't want to crack it, uh, so I can't look at the board right now, but a lot of people are asking, does this work on other consoles? I've tried on every clone console I have. I do not have an original Super Nintendo at this time, but I have plenty of different clone consoles, and this thing does not work on anything but this system. So just wanted to point that out. That was one question people had. So let's go ahead and power this thing off, get that Super Game Boy in there and start testing. So I'm curious, drop a comment down below. If you're into the Super Nintendo, how are you currently playing? Are you using any specific clone console, original hardware, emulation? You know, what kind of emulation are you using? Are you on your PC, cell phone, whatever? I just kind of want to get a poll, see what people are into as far as playing their retro games, but let's go ahead and boot this up. This is my first time booting up Super Game Boy on here, so let's see how that works out. And so far, so good. So uh, Dragon Warrior 1 and 2, excellent, excellent game. And it appears to be working. Awesome. Enix Presents. Oh, wow, the audio for the Super Game Boy? Hell of a lot louder than playing uh, Super Nintendo cartridges. That's crazy. It's also kind of tinny and muffled. That isn't great. Yeah, the, the sound, it's like I gotta, it's like I gotta turn it down a bit because it's, it's almost blowing the speakers in this little monitor here. Let us meet again, brave CAC. But there you go. We have a Game Boy Color game in the Super Game Boy and that is working just fine, it appears. Let's go ahead and test the, uh, the EverDrive. That's pretty damn loud, man. And then we'll get into the uh, teardown of this device, the system here. Hopefully that boots up. The, you know, EverDrives always require more power and you never know. OS initialized and it appears we are good. Sweet. So yes, we can use the Super Game Boy with original cartridges that are compatible with it and the EverDrive loading up games that are compatible with it as well. So all Game Boy games and then certain uh, Game Boy Color games and games that you know were set up for the Super Game Boy. Let's go ahead and check this out. Yeah, I'm gonna lower the audio for some reason. This thing is freaking, it's, it's loud. It is so damn loud. I don't even have the, uh, the audio all the way up on this monitor. And that's like, like, sounds like it's trying to blast the speakers out. Let's see if that's any better. I mean, it's, it's better, but it's still a little, a little muffled. Oh, good thing we tested that out, man. If you get one of these and uh, <laughs> you're playing Super Nintendo games and you switch over to the Super Game Boy, you may have to turn your volume down. 
But okay, there we go. That stuff is working. Let's power off, unplug everything, and start tearing it down. Just take a look at what a, you know, how it looks on the inside anyway. I, I love the switches on this thing. Everything's pretty chunky and feels good. The cartridge cover locks when you have the power on. Very nice. Um, I know I've seen people uh, put the, uh, the logo right there. I did put this uh, Super Nintendo sticker if you haven't watched my previous video. A little closer to look at the front. Ventilation on the bottom. Five volts, one amp. Past the uh, QC test, we're gonna have to break that sticker. Let's go ahead and uh, start unscrewing this thing, get that unscrewing action going. All the screws are accounted for. And let's go ahead and get this thing up. There's the, uh, the inside, the mechanism for locking in the cartridges, the eject, the reset, little spring action there, the light pipe for when you're powered on. Not too bad looking on the inside here. Decent quality plastic. I mean, that's kind of unusual for devices like this straight out of uh, straight out of China. Wow, so there's not really like, there's not a lot going on here. Oh, it was kind of a pain in the ass getting the, uh, the uh, ejector pulled out. It was kind of like stuck on the side, even after trying to pry out the, uh, the spring. As the spring sits in there, in the bottom, loops around that steel rod, and then hits in here. Type of thing. Mechanism's not bad. It was just kind of a bitch getting it out. What is this little like extra board on the side right here? That's what I want to freaking know. Holy crap. So here's our power, um, you know, interfacing power composite and HDMI. So our video and power board right there. Take a look at that. And then here is our main board, the essentially the Super Nintendo, our cartridge interface, all of our chips, TCT975, 976, 978, and then some NEC chips in there. Samsung chip down there. I don't know what any of these do at the moment without looking them up, but there you go. There's all the chips and we have some blobs over here. I'm not sure what this board is. It's dated uh, 2017. I'm not sure what that is. I wonder if that has something to do with like the NES stuff. Maybe like, I, I'm wondering because you know, nothing here is really unusual for the most part, but this, like we have our controller interface up here. Everything's ribbon cabling into this really there's nothing underneath the uh, the board as far as chips or anything. Um, it's just everything's on top there. So uh, that's the unusual thing. So I'm wondering if maybe this is like an NES on a chip type of thing, like a miniaturized NES. I don't want to like pull it off of there, but I'm curious if maybe that's an NES. And when you put this cartridge in here, that something triggers in the system saying, hey, we have uh, access to NES games now, so let's bypass all this and you know, piggyback off of this thing and play NES games. Because the way it was playing these NES games, it was definitely not software emulation. That was you know, hardware you know, that they were running this off of. So I find that odd, unless there's like more in here that has to do with the system. But yeah, I've never seen a little add-on board like that. It's just kind of like out of place, but it's there. And I'm really curious if that's what it's for. It could be. 
So there's the inside of this thing. Appreciate you guys stopping by, checking this video out. It means the world to me. Uh, if you want to help the channel out, take a look at my online shop, madpixelshop.com, where I sell previously reviewed items, stuff from my collection. It's part of, you know, what helps me to keep going. But you guys just showing up, commenting, hitting that like button, and subscribing helps me out more so than anything. So that's greatly appreciated. But I do got to plug my shop every once in a while. So thanks for hanging, guys. And I will catch you on the next one. Peace out. Big ass blurry thumb butt like Bigfoot in your face. Bye bye and boom. Bye.